Hello, this is Mr. Kenyanola, and I'm going to show you how to find the surface area of any prism. Uh, so, first thing is, let's figure out what a prism is. So let's look at this right here. Okay, this is a rectangular prism. This is a hexagonal or hexagonal prism. Okay, and this right here, is this a prism? No, this is a pyramid. So what's the difference between a prism and a pyramid? Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, this. And if I try to do that with this pyramid here, okay, if I just flipped it, it would fall over. So the main difference, the biggest difference between a prism and a pyramid is that a prism has two bases. You could flip it, okay, and it would still be standing. So here, it would still be standing, but with a pyramid, so if it stood there and I flipped it, uh, if I, uh, yeah, rotate 180 degrees, it would just fall over. So a pyramid only has one base, Prisms have two bases. Um, so there's two characteristics about bases. Uh, so a base, so this one right here, and it's opposite side or opposite face. Um, two things. First thing is that they're congruent. So this base right here is the exact same size, same measurements as the other base right here. So the bases are congruent. Another thing is true about the bases is that they are parallel. So look at the two bases for this uh, hexagonal prism, he hexagonal prism, whichever way you want to say it. They are congruent. This is a hexagon and this is the congruent hexagon. And if I turn it sideways this way, they are both parallel, so they'll never intersect. So what are the two characteristics about the bases of a prism? They're congruent and they're parallel. Okay, so that's how you figure out which ones are the bases. If we go to this triangular prism, okay, um, yeah, it looks like these rectangles could be the bases, okay, because they're congruent, but they are not parallel. So this one intersects right here. But the triangles right here are congruent and parallel, so they go in the same direction. So bases, so let's write this down. The bases, number one, are congruent. And number two, they are parallel. So remember that, that'll help us out. Uh, so, but our main goal is to find the surface area of a rectangular prism. Uh, there's two ways that you can do this. You can find the area of each one of these faces. Okay, so with a prism, uh, with a rectangular prism, there are one, two, three, four, five, six faces. So we could find the area of each of these and just add them all up. Um, but today I'm going to show you a formula uh, that will help us not just on prisms, but uh, with other solids as well. So, um, so with area, just remember what area means. It's how many squares it can fit on the surface. So if you had little, uh, little stickers that were in the shape of a square how many of these little square stickers could we fill up all of these all the surface of this prism okay so how many squares can fit on the surface that's what we're trying to figure out um so let's figure out a formula that will help us out uh so that formula so what we established was for a prism there are two bases so uh, we're going to write S surface area, so SA, so surface area equals, okay, uh, so if we found, so we're going to start off with finding the area of one of the bases, so B, but how many bases are there? There are two bases, okay, that are congruent and parallel, so we'll write two, okay. And then, but we're not done because we only have the two bases and we're, we're missing these, this surface right here. This is called uh, the lateral area right here, OK? 
Okay, so we need to find out the area of this, add it to the two bases, and then we'll be done. So the way to think about this is, let's say that, let's say that um, this lateral area right here, okay, was wrapped in wrapping paper. So try to imagine it wrapped in wrapping paper. And let's say that I peeled off that wrapping paper. So if I peel it off here, and I peel it off here, and I peel it off here, and I peel it off here, okay? Imagine it, can you guys see it? It's this shape right here. What shape would that be? It would be, yep, a rectangle. Do you guys know what the formula is for the area of a rectangle is? Base times height, or length times width. Uh, so for this right here, let's figure out what represents the length and the width of this unwrapped rectangle, which represents all these faces. Okay, so uh, the base or the length of this invisible rectangle would be the length of this plus this side right here plus this side right here plus this side right here. What does that represent? Well, if we added all four of these sides, that would be the perimeter of the space. Right here. So if we had the perimeter of this, okay, that would be the length of this rectangle. And this part right here would be the height or the distance between the two bases. Okay, so uh, let's write it plus P and we're going to write H. So let me explain what each of these represent. So this B, and so for you guys doing this, uh, make a power card on this, okay, and write a surface area of a prism on the front, flip it over and write this formula down on the back. And let's, let's label what each of these represents. Okay, this B represents base area. Okay, this two mean represents the two bases. So we found one base area, okay, we multiply it by two to get the other base area for the two congruent bases that are parallel to each other. Okay, this P represents the base perimeter okay so it's this plus this plus this plus this right here and this h you may think it represents height uh, but we're going to call it something else uh, so the h represents the distance between the two bases or how far the two bases are from each other so distance between the two faces. Okay, I know this seems like a lot right now, but the more practice we get, uh, the easier it'll get. So let's just go over this formula again. So the B stands for the base area for one base. We multiply it by two because we have the, we want to get the area of both bases. Now we want to get, uh, then we're going to add uh, this part right here, which represents all of these faces right here in between. Uh, so if you get the base perimeter, and multiply it by the distance between the two bases, okay? Like the wrapping paper example, if we unwrapped it, okay? This right here is this P times H, which represents all four of these faces put together. So the area of all four of these faces. Okay, so let's do an example. So we have this right here, uh, which is a rectangular prism. It's a rectangular prism because the bases are rectangles. So we're gonna assign, we have some choices here, uh, some options for which which faces, which flat surfaces we wanna make our bases. Um, let's just choose the, the top one. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight this top face right here. 
M, it's opposite one. Okay, highlight it. These two are gonna be our bases. Um, so let's use our formula. So let's just put equals and let's find the area of one of the bases. So it looks like this side is 11, this side is eight. So what's 11 times eight? I don't think we need a calculator for that. Hopefully not. 11 times eight is 88. What does that 88 represent? It represents one of the areas for one of the bases. Since we have two of them, we'll multiply it by two, okay? And we'll write plus. Now let's figure out the base perimeter. So since we assign this right here, this face to be the base, uh, let's, let's figure out what the perimeter is. Since it's a rectangle, if this side is eight, then this side has to be eight. And if this is 11, then its opposite side is congruent. So this is 11. So perimeter is the distance uh, around the figure or the shape. So let's just add all these up. 8 plus 11 plus 8 plus 11. Let's use our calculator. So 8 plus 11 plus 8 plus 11 would be 38. So the perimeter of this base is 38 inches. Okay. And now we're going to multiply that by the distance between the two bases. So the two bases here, the distance between them is 12 inches. So we'll put times 12. Okay. And then we'll just multiply it all out. Let's use our calculator. Uh, 2 times 88 is 176 plus 38 times 12 is 456 and let's just add these two numbers up 456 plus 176 would be 632 so 632 what units is this in in inches and because area is how many squares that we could fit on the surface don't forget the inches squared okay so that's how you find a surface area of a rectangular prism. So in summary, uh, a rectangular prism or any prism has two bases. The bases are congruent and parallel, like the ones right here that we highlighted. The formula for surface area of a prism is uh, 2B. The 2 represents the two bases. The B represents the base area. So we find the area of one base and multiply it by 2. And then we need to find the area of the other faces, the faces in the middle. So we're going to find use, find the base perimeter. So what we did, we added this side, this side, this side, and this side. Okay, and we multiplied it by the distance between the two bases. Doing this, so if we unwrapped this this side and this side and this side, we'd have a rectangle. So this is really finding the area of a rectangle. And so this would give us all the area of these four faces right here. So we added it, added these sides right here to find the perimeter, multiplied it by the distance between the two, which was 12, multiplied, got 456 for the area of these four faces right here, we got 176 for these two bases right here. And we just added them up and we got 632 inches squared because again, area is how many squares fit on the surface. And that's how you find the surface area of a rectangular prism.